What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. Today I am going to walk you through the simple process of installing the Plex server add-on called Plex Pi on a Windows machine. And while this is a simple installation, there are a couple things that I had to do to get this thing working correctly right off the start. So hopefully with this guide, you can get it up and running very quickly without any issues. <laughs> So again, this is a walkthrough for a Windows-based Plex server. I do plan on doing additional guides for Linux and FreeNAS, but for now, this is what I'm going to start with. To start things off, you will need two things to prepare your system for the installation. Or if you're like me and already have Plex Watch installed on your server, then you will also want to migrate your database over. So in this case, you will need three files. The first thing you need is Python 2.7. Now, Python does have a newer version available, but we have to make sure that we only download the 2.7 version version. For me, I was able to download the version 2.7.11 from their website that I will link in the description. And as a side note, I did also download the 64-bit version. This is something to make note of for future reference when we might need to download additional files to support our Plex Watch migration. After downloading, you can go ahead and install Python using the default settings. The next thing we need is Git for Windows, that's G-I-T. This will allow us to easily install and run the needed software for Plex Pi with the help of a friendly user interface. You can find that software here from the link in the description. Now, during this installation, you wanna make sure that on the screen that says Adjusting Your Path Environment, you select Use Git from the Windows Command Prompt. Everything else can be installed with default options. I, however, did choose to opt out of the option Enable Git Credential Manager. The next file that you will need after the Git installation is a pre-compiled DLL file for SQLite. I needed this because I wanted to migrate over my PlexWatch database, and without it, I kept running into errors during my attempts. So navigate to the download page here, which again will be linked in the description, and download the latest version of the pre-compiled binaries for Windows. Make sure to pick the correct bit version based off what you installed, either 64 or 32-bit Python. So for me, I downloaded the SQLite DLL Win X64. After downloading, you can extract this file, then navigate to the installation directory of Python, which should be C colon slash Python 27, look for a folder named DLLs, and copy the downloaded DLL to the directory. As a precaution though, I did change the original DLL to .bak, so if I ran into any errors, I could easily revert it to the original. I recommend you do the same. The next step is installing PlexPy by using the Git interface. So get to where you can see your desktop, right click on it and select the new option you see, Git GUI here. When the interface comes up, you will see three separate options. Go ahead and click on the option Clone Existing Repository. You will now have two boxes to put information in. The top is where you're going to need to input the Git repo location. I will go ahead and provide that information for you in the description of this video for you to copy and paste. The second is where you want it to be installed at. So for example, what I did is I chose C colon Plex Pi. I should also note here that you do not want to create the folder in advance or use the name of an existing folder because it will return an error. As for the other options, just leave them as default and click clone. After this is done, you can close out of the new screen that pops up. Now we can start Plex Pi for the first time and start getting it set up. To do this, navigate to the installation directory that you chose, for example, C colon slash Plex Pi, find the file named plexpy.py and double click it. Okay, after it does its thing, your default browser should open up and now you can start your configuration. This should be pretty easy to set up. After you enter in your login credentials for the Plex website, then all you have to do is select your server's IP address from the drop-down menu. So really, after all this is done, you've officially set up Plex Pi and have everything going and running correctly. But for me, I want to import my Plex Watch database so I will have more details about past usage. To do this, go to the top right gears icon and select settings. Then from the left hand menu, click on extra settings. Then at the bottom, underneath the title database import tool, click on PlexWatch. From this screen, you will need to enter in the location and file name of the PlexWatch database. So for me, it was C colon slash PlexWatch slash PlexWatch.db. And to make it easy on myself, I just copy and pasted the path from the explorer window with the file name already in it. 
Importing really shouldn't take much longer than maybe a minute or two, and afterwards you can see many more statistics that were pulled from the Plex Watch database. And now you can go through and explore all the different features and layouts of Plex Pi, and then compare those to those of Plex Watch to see which ones you prefer. You will see a lot of similarities between the two, but you will also find some extra features packed into Plex Pi. Now a couple last things that we can do with PlexPy is to set it up without having to use a large black dialog box and to start it with Windows. So to do this, start by shutting down PlexPy from the gear icon in the top right. After they're shut down, navigate to your PlexPy installation directory and find the PlexPy file. This time, right click on it and select the option Open With, and then choose another app. This will allow you to open the file with a different program. At the bottom of this window, make sure to check the box that says always use this app to open.py files. Then click on more apps and then look for another app on this PC. Now we want to navigate to the Python program folder, which should be C colon slash Python 27. And here you will see two programs that you can open up this file with. Rather than opening it with the default python.exe program, instead we are going to be using an alternative pythonw.exe file. This will run the program in the background without the need of a large black application window. Once it's done starting up, it should automatically start your browser and take you to the web interface. If you would like to disable this feature of automatically launching your browser on startup, you can do so from the settings screen under the web interface option. Alrighty, now that we have it opening up without a large dialog screen, we can now set it up to auto start with Windows. And yes, there are a few different ways to do this, but I will just show you a very simple method that I know. So now we get back to your PlexPy installation directory if you're not already there, so you can see your PlexPy application file. Now, right click on your start button and select run, or alternatively, you could hold down the Windows key and press the R key. From this run dialog box, type in shell colon startup and hit enter. Now you will see the startup folder for your system, and from here, all you have to do is create a shortcut to your PlexPy application file and put it into the startup folder. So this way, every time your server needs to be rebooted, PlexPy will always come back up. All right, well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching, and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more tutorials like this in the future.